Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Amen. We want to, once again, we are broadcasting from our home out in Ontario, and we just want to thank God for everyone's life in the name of Jesus and his many mercies. You know, we are in such a time right now in the COVID pandemic, you know, which we have been talking about that, and the whole world is talking about that, um, um, that have the world in a constant state of uncertainty and fear, you know, when will it end, will, the, will we come up with a vaccine, etc. And then on top of that, you know, we have all this unrest going on right now in the world, throughout the world, uh, racism and different, you know, lots of different things. We just want to ask God to extend his grace and his favor and his blessing and his mercy during this time um, because we so need him to abide in us as we abide in him. So let's pray and ask the Lord for his grace this morning in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this time in your presence. May you continue to keep us. May you continue to watch over us and let your face keep shining upon us as a leader. Thank you like you. It is you who keep us completely break away, especially your church, from the control and the conforming ways of this world and renew the entirety, the entirety of our mind with the knowledge of Jesus. We want to thank you for sanctifying us in our spirit, in our soul, in our body, by your word that is truth and the washing of the Holy Spirit and directing our heart into your love and in the process filling us with Christ's patience and perseverance. It is you who equipped us to do your will by making Jesus our righteousness our peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, our sanctification, our redemption, our wisdom. Father, right now I'm asking you to keep releasing your grace in your church and throw the rams. Gather your creation back to you. Fill us with the Holy Spirit and lead us by the Holy Spirit. The enemy will never be able to ensnare us. He will never have inroad activities or influence upon our life. We commit ourselves afresh into your hands in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I say Amen, amen. Today we are starting a series that is named The Software You Use. Everybody is using a software, an operating um, software in, in the operating program that um, allows us to believe a certain way, to think a certain way, to speak a certain way, and to act a certain way. And the result that you're getting in your life is reflective of the software that you are currently running or using. Amen. And as for the operated program, there are only two. They're they're the on church or the or the or the church, meaning they're regenerated, or the, the the original one, the Adamic one, that is that is sin infested, that is operating in a defective way. So we only have the regenerated one, like I said, the current update, and and we have, as you'll see today, as we look at the word, and we have the um, unupdated one, that is that that is not running properly with the sin infested. So, but one thing for certain, as I said, the software that you're using, no matter which operated program, whether it's the second Adam or the first Adam, or it's just considered the second Adam, the first Adam is the first man that was created to do God's bidding, but then he got infested. Whether you're using that, as I said, that operated program or the not, both use a software. And that software, as I say, is dictating why you, you live the way you are, and believe a certain a certain way and think certain way and speak certain way and the different um experiences you're having in your life as a result of the software so i want to start this morning by looking as we before we get into the nuts and bolts of this process i want to get into the um the architect of of, of, of the environment and, and that which he, which is uh, and and we human beings and animals that he has placed in the environment on the earth so I want to start this morning by looking at the book of um, Isaiah 42, verse 5 through, um, 5 through 7. Isaiah 42, 5 to 7. In the name of Jesus. It says, which software is working? Yeah, which software do you use? The software you use. Amen. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, the Eagle Eye Prophet, chapter 42. Are we going to go to um, verse 5 through 7? If we're going to understand how the process works effectively, we need to understand the architect too and, and his intention because. We are placed according to his intention. Amen. 
So verse 5 reads, Thus say God the Lord, he who create the heavens and stretch them forth, he who spread abroad the hurt, and that which comes out of it. So the architect who designed the heavens and the hurt, amen, is, is God himself. He's the one designed what we, this planet we live on, amen, and the heavens above, amen. And, and then the Bible went on to say, and that which comes out of it. He went on to say, he who give breath to the people on it, and spirit to those who walk in it. So he give life to everything and spirit, amen, that, um, that moves inside, amen, of the realms or the atmosphere that he's created. Verse 6 said, I, the Lord, have called you the Messiah. On top, you'll notice Jesus is the Messiah. He is called the Messiah. Too. So he said, I, the Lord, have called you the Messiah for a righteous purpose. So even Jesus being sent, as you know, John 3, 16, it said, for God so loved the world, because he so loved the world that he had created in the heavens, amen, that he sent his only unique begotten son. Now, we will look later on and see why he had to send his son and so forth. So he said, I've called the Lord, amen, I've called the Messiah for a righteous purpose. And in righteousness, I will take you by the hands and will keep you. I will give you for a covenant to the people, Israel, for a light to the nations, the general. So he said, amen, I have called and sent forth Jesus the Messiah, amen, for a purpose. And I'm going to make a covenant with Israel and the Gentile. Amen. So this Jesus' purpose was to come in, was to make a covenant, amen, he come forth in righteousness for this purpose with Israel and to be the light for the Gentile nation which is us, etc. Verse 7 said, to open the eyes of the blind. This is why he comes. This is one of the purpose. His purpose was to, as I said, amen, to set up a covenant with Israel and for the Gentile, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoner from the dungeon and those who sit in darkness, amen, from the prison. So he was on a particular mission. He only lived for a very, very short time, amen, like 33 years. But was a very, very focused. God was leading him by the hands. He was sent forth for a purpose. Where said, I, the Lord, have called you, the Messiah, for a righteous task, a righteous purpose. And I called you in righteousness. He said, I will lead you by the hands, and I will keep you, and I will give you as a covenant, so I can reestablish a covenant with my people Israel that has break covenant with me. I'll, I'll write that wrong they're doing. And with the Gentile nation that is not moving right with me. You're going to open the eyes of the blind. You're going to bring out the prisoners that are in dungeon. And those that are sitting in darkness. So this is what the architect, amen, of the herd. The one who created verse 5. The God who created the heavens and the herd. Amen. Wanted. He know in his heaven and earth. He had a people in Israel that is not walking properly. He had a Gentile nation that's living in darkness. And you have a whole lot of people that are blind and living in prison. Amen. And in darkness. So he sent for Jesus. Now we're going to just turn also just a few more chapter forward to Isaiah 45, verse 18. Isaiah. Yeah. Actually, we're going to read two, two verses in Isaiah 45, verse 12 and verse 18 in Isaiah chapter 45. 12, 2, 18 or 12, 18. Verse 12 and 18. Verse 12 said, very similar, exactly like chapter 42, verse 5 through 7. I made the hurt. Amen. Actually, let's go back to verse 11. I like to put context to thing before I, I, I get into the thing. So I'm just going to read 11 and 12 and then we'll read 18. Thus say the Lord, I mean everything here is thus say the Lord. The Lord is making a decree, a statement, when I am the one speaking. Thus say the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, amen, and its maker. He said, I'm the Holy One of Israel and I'm its maker, amen. Would you question me about things to come concerning my children and concerning, amen, the works of my hands? Would you command me? He said, I'm the one create everything, amen. I'm the one create the people. I made the hurt and create man upon it. He said, I'm the one who created this earth, and I create man on it. We're going to see why he did that in a minute. 
So you take full responsibility. See this hurt that you see and you're living and the things as you see in Isaiah 40 that comes out of it. It's me. I'm the one created. We know this from Genesis chapter 1. Amen. God spent six days creating everything, separating the heavens and the earth, etc. Then he said, Amen. Let's create man. Amen. Or, or five days creating everything and the sixth day said, Let's create man. Um, where am I? Verse 12 says, I made the hurt and created man upon it. I with my hand stretch out the heavens and I command all the ropes. He said, I stretch out the heaven over the earth and I command all the ropes. Everything that happens in it, I create. Now, verse 18, we know that he created the earth and created the heavens. Amen. And he's commanding all of it. Now, if you flow down to verse 18, you'll see what is it. All this earth he set up at man, he put in it, and, the, and why he set up. Commandment are instruction. Just like when you buy something, whether it's a barbecue, whether it's a, a lawnmower or, or a car, it comes with an instruction manual with a specific purpose, even when he sent Jesus with a specific purpose. So verse 18 said, For thus is the Lord speaking again, For thus say the Lord, amen, who created the heaven, God himself who formed the earth and made it, who established it and did not create it to be a worthless waste. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no one else. So you got the reason why I create the earth and, and the heavens and put man. I want it to be always have people. I want it to always be filled with people and to have things that I put in it to grow. Amen. And he said in verse 12, as you see, I have commandment, different instruction, different system running to keep it being inhabited and keep it flowing and going. Now, this is very important because... If you flow in alignment with the architect, you will find you're moving effectively. And we're going to look at this later on. But you'll find if you're working against the principle and the purpose of the architect, you're going to have a lot of challenge. And especially when the architect or the designer is far stronger, far wiser than you can ever be. Amen. It's like when you tell Paul, why are you kicking against the goat? Why do you kick against the one who set everything in place? And even call you, or the reason why children, and this is why every child that is born, just like Jesus that we see it in 42, the Messiah, they are born for a specific purpose, in a specific time, according to the habitation and according to the command, the architect, the one who created the earth and designed the heaven. There's yes. no mistake. Right. Now, whether the child will walk in that purpose, that's a whole different okay. story. Yep. But nevertheless, they are created in a specific time for a specific purpose. This is why each human being, if you have the opportunity, always encourage them to be the best. The only way, one of the ways you're going to get to see God's purpose and see what he's doing, it's through the different vessel he has sent it to release a specific purpose. You get to see the plans and the thought through the imago day. Amen. That which is designed with the image and the abilities of God to do certain things, the God man. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So as we see the architect who sets up everything and sets it up for a specific purpose in a specific time, and one of the major purposes we see in Isaiah 45, verse 18, it's to make sure the earth is always filled. It's always inhabited. It's always have inhabitants living in it and moving in it. Amen? It's full. Yes, he said, I, in verse, uh, in half of, or three quarter way in 45, he said, I did not create the earth. To be a wasteless place, a worthless place where no one live or nothing. It's just there like a desert. It, yes, it's the very charge you give Adam and Eve. Go forth and multiply, fill the hurt. He's, a, he's, he's like a mother, he's El Shaddai. When the house is filled with laughter and happiness and children, he's super pleased. When it's not, what you're going to find, so please be clear as we we'll walk through this process. Anytime you are working against habitation, you're destroying the hurt and the things that make the hurt feel and luscious, whether it's children, people, or the forestry, be very clear that you are against the creator, the architect, who set it up. You will have him, like oh, Paul, what, amen, he stand against Paul, or, or Balaam, he stand against, he will stand against you because you're working against, you're, you're trying to um, sabotage his plan, his purpose for establishing the earth, you and everything in it. I want to, you know, the Bible teaches in um, Hebrews, it is a dreadful thing to be in the hands of what? God. 
to make him stand against you. It is a terrible thing when he decides to position himself against you. And later on, we will look and see that process. You always want to make sure you have God's favor, not God's wrath. God's favor, not God's wrath. And understanding who he is and what he has done and what he wants, then you can pray effectively, Lord, help me to move according to your habitation, according to your will. Instead of working against your will and your purpose, working against your habitation. Walk, amen. So you can be effective in the name of Jesus. There's a lot of talk these days about the Constitution, Bill Gates, the, the U.S. Constitution, mm -hmm. free will, free speech, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? and they're always invoking that because that was their original design. Mm -hmm. It's the same with God. Mm -hmm. This is his Constitution. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect, perfect. In the function of, of Pastor Chelsea, you know, there's a way out things, a Constitution for everything, how it flows. And, and the Lord gave us an example, and the prophet Isaiah was trying to um, demonstrate and illustrate this point. And he showed us a pattern. And he goes, I want to show you something and, and, and how it works and what needs to happen for you to work in alignment with the architect or to operate in the blessings of God. We will look later on at Deuteronomy chapter 29, from 18 to 21, and you'll see what it's like to go against it and the effect of it, which, which is catastrophic and devastating, extreme disruption. Let's look at um, Isaiah chapter 28. From verse 22. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 28 from verse 22. And actually, just uh, we, I want to give you a little bit of background. Let's read verse 21 first, and then and then we'll, we'll, we'll get into the flow. As I said, I want to go from 22 to 29, which, you, which you'll see the principle. Um, 28. 28. Isaiah 28. 21 to 29. Yeah. In Jesus' name. And 21 um, implies if you if you are working against the architect against his design amen which is to have it 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 is it, it, hurt amen abatated abatated if you work against it what will happen in verse 21 it said for the lord will amen, raise up as on mount parazim he will be wrathful amen as in the valley of gibeon that he may do his work his strange work Amen. And bring to pass the acts, a strange act. When you when Gideon got to destroy a whole lot of them, who, the five kings who came against, amen, the Gibeonite. When you um, are working and trying to destroy the inhabitants of the of, of the hurt that God has put to inhabit the hurt, you will find the Lord himself come to defend his work. He got, I didn't create a thing for you to destroy it, and you can't destroy it because you didn't create it. Correct. You go, if you try to destroy what I create or my people or the things, you will find that you are dealing with me and you're not stronger than me and you're not smarter than me. I mean, you simply can't stand against me, so I will come against you. My strange act will begin. My wrathful ways will, will, will come out. So in essence, God's wrathful with defense is creation or that which he established and he don't want to be destroyed. He has a way and is capable of keeping that which he start or that which he is established. Amen. So verse 22 went on to say, Amen. You'll, you'll, you'll see what's going on. Now, therefore, do not be scoffers, lest the band which bind you be made stronger. For a decree of destruction, Amen, have I heard from the Lord of hosts upon the whole land, Amen, and the whole earth. When you try to destroy God's creation, or sabotage it, or work against it, amen, you will find the band of destruction, that which can destroy you and all of your beliefs, your thoughts, your words, can be released. God can become wrathful, amen. So verse 23, Isaiah turned to them now and he said, 
give here, give ears and hear my Isaiah voice. Listen and hear my words. Does he who plow for sowing? He said the reason you're plowing is for sowing. Plow continuously. You'll see the cause and effect, the way of things. Does he who continue to plow and harrow the ground after it is smooth? He said, after you have plowed and, and, and the fields is ready and it's now smooth, do you just continue plowing? You do not. Verse 25 said, when he has leveled its surface, does he not cast abroad the seeds of dill or fennel? Amen. And scatter cumin, a seasoning, and put the wheat in rows and barley in its intended place and spelt an inferior kind of wheat, amen, as the border. So he puts everything where everything and he puts, you know, spelt around the border just to keep everything in place, surrounded. Like how we, yeah, like how we put up a fence. Amen. Verse 26 says, and he trained each of them correctly. So he planted all these different things, whether it's dill, whether it's cumin, whether it's, it's fennel, amen, or wheat or barley. And then after he put them in place, look what he does. Just like how the Lord created the earth. And you'll see he, he trained everything a to live accordingly, amen, to the inhabited principle. To inhabit, to coexist, in essence, not to destroy. This is why the first command is to love the Lord. Love the Lord and you'll love what he do. Second, you're not allowed to, you, mean, you have to love your fellow man. You're not allowed to kill or destroy that which you did not what, create or put in place. You, you can't touch it. It's not yours. It is not yours to take. So he said, and in order for you not to do that, he said, I'm going to train you how to operate in my habitation, in my creation. I'm going to train you how to operate according to the principle, amen, that I want everything to what? To live and, and exist and keep expanding. And this is everything. So it's worth 26. Cents. And he trained each of them correctly. For his God instruct him correctly and teaches it. In order to know, because the man just got the seed, the Bible teaches in Genesis, God created, amen, um, fruits. And each fruit has what? It's seed in it. So God said, I'm going to train you to handle each of these seeds, each of these, amen, whether it's cumin or dill or barley, accordingly, amen. So you, as you'll see, so you plant it and live according to the principle of it. I'm going to teach you how to live on my hurt and how to live in peace and how to live according to habitation instead of destruction. So you're on the right side of things. You're in the way of blessing instead of the way of destruction. So you see, so you see. He didn't leave him because if man was just working against God contrary with no training, God would not have liked that he's destroyed, but man have no choice. He's never been what? Trained how to do it. If a doctor has never been trained and, and he's doing surgery and he's doing opposite and destroying you, you're not going to like it, but you can't blame him. He don't know what he's doing. He has to train for a tremendous amount of years, then he still has to do practical. If a mechanic is operating your car that has not been trained and turning everything upside down, you go, well, he doesn't know any better. He has to be trained and be a certified mechanic before you're willing to let him what? Touch your vehicle. Mm -hmm. So God said, because I've made, as you see in Isaiah 45, verse 18, the hurt not to be wasteless and to be inhabited. Amen. I have created a human for a specific purpose. The Bible said God would not have let anything grow because there was nobody in Genesis to what? Work it. To take care of it. So he said, I have to design somebody with the ability to what? Take care of it. Because I don't make things to what? To destroy it. So he said, um, and he trained each of them correctly for his God instructs, instructs him correctly and teaches him. Now he went on to show these are the things he has to learn. For dill is not, amen, is not trusted, amen. For dill is not trust with a sharp, you mean trussling instrument. Nor is the, you went on to say, nor is a cartwheel roll over cumin. But dill is beaten off with a staff and cumin with a rod by hands. Each one have its own what? Principle or way how it's done. Amen. Verse 28 said, does one crush bread grain? No, he does not thrust it continuously. But when he has amen, driven his cartwheel and his horse over it, he scattered it, tossed it up to the wind without having crushed it. 
This also comes from the Lord of hosts, who is wonderful in counseling and instructing and advising and excellent in wisdom and effectual in working. He works with you and teach you how to work with the things he has created because he knows you didn't create it. Right. He knows you're not familiar. So he has to teach you the ways of the principle according to habitation to live on the earth with number one with him. So you're not doing things contrary to his design. Mm -hmm. This is why one of the number one fight you have, one of the number one sin you commit is against what? This is why David said, David did something terrible, but he said, I have sinned against God. You kill a man, you think he says sin against the man. But the man didn't create, he said, he said, I have sinned against the one who created that man and set up the rules of habitation. So when I did a wrong, I did a wrong against the one who created, not the one who I did it to. I did that to him too, but the more important, the one who created him. I went against the principle. Mm -hmm. you, you know, there's a wonderful story, David. Um, David was having trouble in his house, one of his son. Um, um, before Absalom, Absalom did the second part. He had a son named um, Ammon. Ammon, I think it's Ammon or Nahum. Um, anyhow, he raped his sister, Tamar, uh, Absalom's, Absalom's sister. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, and as a result, Absalom killed him mm -hmm. and ran away. So David is grieved. He grieved over Ammon or Nahum. And then um, he's grieving over Absalom, run away um, after he killed him. So David house is falling apart and, and, and David is grieving. Anyhow, because David is king, he don't want to um, he bring back Absalom, but he's, his heart is for Absalom. So Joab realized that um, David is missing his son. So he will send a lady and give her the words what to say and, and tell her, go and say these things. And, and he, you know David know the principles of God. So he, he got, I want you to go and I want you to activate these principles to David. And when David see it, David will bring back Absalom. Quickly, I want to show you this, uh, following this pattern. I'm going to 2 Samuel. I think it's, I think it's um, for chapter 14, I believe. See if I can find it. There's a way to deal with everything. Yeah. From deal to family. Exactly. Also, before you go, mm -hmm. you can be a man or a woman of God in a person's living in the right way, but then your offspring there, mm -hmm. you can bring judgment upon your Of husband. course. Happens all the time. Because David was a man after God's own heart, but yet one of his kids, well, two of them. Mo most of it, them. Yeah, quite a few of them, yeah. Went against. Yeah. Ezekiah was, was an excellent man of God, mm -hmm. even as God the Spirit's life, but then he brought forth, bring forth a child. Mm -hmm. he, he wreaked havoc. He undo everything Ezekiah has done. Right. I think with Manasseh. He created just the terrible, terrible, terrible things what he did. But if you are doing all that is right before God, why does he allow your kids sometimes? Be because everybody has a choice. Even though you have a choice whether you're gonna live according God is it's like a landlord, he created everything and, mm -hmm. and, and Jesus tells the story of the parable. He, about, about a wine, uh, a, vin, a vineyard, you rent out. You have a choice. You're going to work according to the landlord or you can work what? Against it. Each man has to answer. Mm -hmm. Amen. For each generation, you will learn the principle of God to operate in God's earth and in, in, in the place where, where, where he placed you. Mm -hmm. Or you can learn to what? Fight against it. Work against it. Yeah. But there's consequence that comes. God don't force what do you want um, upon your children. They have a choice to choose to walk with you the way you walk with God or choose not to. Right. It's you, just that you have to do your part yeah. if they decide to go the right way or the wrong yeah. way. The Bible said Job used to do this. Job children used to love to get together, get together and have a party all the time. And Job will constantly make sacrifice and atonement um, for them. Uh, and this is how he made it. He got, just in case they sinned against the Lord. You didn't know if they did so he made it before and after. Yes. He kind of, let's do it just in case, good Lord. I have already made an atonement. Yeah, yeah. And just in case, our sure. after, sure. He, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't leave it up to them. You know right. what I mean? Uh, are, we at, are we at 2 Samuel chapter 14? Uh, page 372 in the Amplified Bible, which we use. And I'll just give you a background. I can't get into the story for time's sake. Please, if you want, you can read the story. Um, so Joab tell her to go because, as I said, David is grieving over his two sons. One, one's dead, killed by the other one, and the other one run away. 
So the Joab said, go to the king. And the king went act and let and tell the king, you have two sons. And one kill the other one. And now the people go, the one that killed the other one needs to die. Um, so you will be left without any son. So, um, and, and, I, and I want to tell this story to the king. Amen. And, and, and the king is a man of, of wisdom. The king will deal with the story. I wish you wanted to, what do I do? I wanted David to realize one of your son is already there. Don't lose the other one, then you lose both sons. Yeah. You know, it's time to um, redeem the other one so you have one son. So that's the story you should tell. It. Um, I'll check it up. I really want only verse 14, but I, and, and I can't go too far. So she tell David the story and uh, from verse um, verse. Let's pick it up from verse 7 quickly so you got a little bit of background. And behold, <coughs> our whole family has risen against your handmaid, and they said, Deliver him who slay his brother, that we may kill him amen, for the life of his brother. Whom he slew, and so they would destroy the hair also, which is the hair of our, of our family. And so, quenching my coal, which is left, they would leave to my husband neither name, amen, or remnants upon the hurt. David said to the woman, Go home, and I will give order concerning you. The, the woman of Tekoa said to the king, My lord, O king. Let the guilt be on me, amen. Because she's telling him something not true, but she's, she's just drawing a parable to get his mind into a play. And on my father's house, let the king and his throne be guiltless. The king said, If anyone say anything to you, bring him to me, and he shall not touch you again. Then she said, I pray you, let the king remember the Lord your God, amen. That the avenger of blood destroy not anymore lest they destroy my son and david said as the lord lives, they shall not one hair of your son fall to the ground now look closely verse the rest here then the woman said let your unmade i pray you speak amen one word to my lord the king she said amen sorry let me read again then the woman said let your handmaid i pray you speak one word to my lord the king he said say on speak on she said why then have you planned amen such a thing against god if you know god is not into destroying you want you want to inhabit him amen then why are you doing this she said why then have you planned such a thing against god's people for in speaking this word the king is like one who is amen guilty in that he does not bring home is banished son. You're saying, my son, not one here will be touched. Amen. But you have not bring home your son. He's, he's been touched. She went on to say, we must all die. We are all like water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. And God does not take away life, but device means so that he who is banished may not be utterly outcast from it. So God is constantly looking away. To bring back his children, to keep to keep the inhabitants, to keep the hurt the inhabitants, and to keep life what maintain or moving what forward. So the woman called David. She goes, "If you know God, is, is, Amen. Yes, we all have to die. He's constantly looking to maintain life and to keep life. And the reason he created the hurt, Amen, is to sustain life. Then why are you disregarding life? Why are you disregarding life, I, I, Amen, and so forth." And, and Samuel, David will send, send, send for Absalom and bring him back. God is the, the, the establisher of family and the maintainer to make sure the family is established and maintained. Amen. So she just brought David back into the principle of habitation and life so you can see it to bring things back into the order. Amen. So very similar, as I said, in Isaiah, as you could see, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 12, God said, create the earth and the heaven. Amen. And everything in it, and I put human being in it, and the purpose is so the earth can be habit. Amen. The, the habitation of humankind and the things I have put in it. It is, it is very important. And then, as we see when we look at Isaiah, as I said, twenty-eight, God instruct. This is this is what He was doing with Adam. This is what this is what Satan took away from man. The Bible said God used to walk in the garden with Adam, 
you, you know, yesterday I had a wonderful evening with my wife. My wife is a serious gardener. I'm not a gardener. But all the plants, she know their name and she know which one has to be inside, which are annual, which is perennial, which we need a full sun, which need parts of. So if I want, as I walk with her, I'm learning about a plant and what it takes to take care of them. I think we have the best garden in our community. But I could see why. My wife is quite knowledgeable mm -hmm. in each plant, which one needs partial sun, which needs a lot of sun. She'll Google, she'll study it. So she know. So vice versa, God instruct man when he put him in a place how to navigate in that place with the people in the things. If not, God can't hold man what? Accountable. He doesn't know what all man had to do is plead the fifth. I don't, I didn't know. Didn't know this is what they'll need. I did not know I couldn't be deal with a stick. I didn't know, yes. You know, if things that are breaking it, I didn't know I have to put spelt around the border. I, I, I just don't know. So God instructs you when he put when he put something into your hands because you have to give an account how to what handle the things or the people or the area or the situation this is why not everybody is made for the same thing this is why when we trespass we get into trouble you have taught something but you don't have instruction how to navigate what in that area you might have great intention but you do not know how to handle that arena those people this, this is why, uh, what's his name, son, Aaron, two sons, the Bible said they offer strange fire. They wanted to offer sacrifice, do something good. But they did not have the instruction how it should be done. And the consequence is what? Devastated, this detrimental consequence, severe, the severe consequence when you operate something. It's like operating a motor vehicle, you don't have a license. A license state that you have been trained to operate this vehicle according to the safety and the regulation that, and the mandate that has been set up by the uh, authorizing authority in that area. Everyone, it comes with a specific capacity to identify a specific purpose that God made him and the ability to receive the instruction and to execute the plan by the instruction according to God's will. Abuse or misuse is I am operating something. A lot of times I am not the one assigned. And on top of that, I don't have the what? The right instruction. This is misuse of the purpose and the application that is needed towards the task, the person, or the circumstance. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what sin does. Sin makes you trespass and use inadequate, inappropriate method to deal with the people. You know, we're dealing with the unrest we see right now. Amen. And one of the things they're, 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 they're crying, the police are not trained properly. They said they should be trained at the instruction that necessary how to deal with certain. What it is showing, they lack the proper instruction to execute certain things and so forth. Amen. So God makes sure. You now, as I said, one other thing that happened in the Garden of Eden, the Bible said God hates sin, and the Bible said teaches us your sin has separate you from God. I'll say it different. Your sin has separate you from the instruction necessary to live on the earth according to the inhabited principle. Sin separate you from the one who created you and the earth, and the instruction that He has that is necessary how to live your life effectively. To you know, me and my wife was studying yesterday, and we were studying marriage. You know. It is one of the hardest profession you'll be in. But it's one of the, those that people have the least training. A doctor has to be very trained, very instructed in order to operate a mechanic, a carpenter, a landscaper, whatsoever. And many people get into marriage and they can't get out of it. It is something your wits, most job, even to be a doctor, your job, you are to work for eight hours or whatsoever, and then you are, you leave it. So out of a 24 hour, you're there just for a short time after deal with the patient and all the regulation and you go. When you're married, how long are you with your partner? So all the time, every day, fun for the rest of your life. So in order to have success, you will need tremendous what? Instruction. How to deal according to the principle of what? Marriage. If you are not extremely instructed in the heart of this, you can't do this effectively. Hence why the divorce rate is so high. Because the people, their intention is good. They want to do it, but they lack what? Instruction. The Bible teaches in Isaiah 4, 6, my people die and are suffering for lack of what? Knowledge. They do not know how to navigate that area, those people. The, the dill, the barley, the cumin, 
the proper belief, the proper thinking, the proper speaking, the proper relationship into play with God or man. Because sin separates you. It cut you off from the source of what? Instruction according to the task. So you find yourself in a place, in a time, in a situation, and you don't know how to what? Do, how to navigate the water. There's a thing we say in the West Indies, I'm trying a thing. It means I don't know how it goes or how it's going to work, but I'm going to kind of try and see what will happen. I'm winging it. <laughs> Literally, I'm, I'm just winging it. I'm, I'm hoping for the <laughs> Yes. I'm experimenting. Mm -hmm. I am messing with people's life and my life and my future Oops. and hoping, <laughs> and hoping somehow it's going to work out. That's a recipe for disaster. And then I go, sorry, didn't know it was going to burden the whole house. And some of these things you can't recover from. This is why, as I said, this word is called the software you use, the instruction you are using in your life when you're dealing with God, yourself, people, things, and situations. Make sure, amen, it's the one from the architect, the one who designed the situation, the place, the things, and you, according to his will. He's the one designed you, the thing, and the situation, and have the appropriate instruction how to navigate or to carry it out with success. Lacking this or insufficient amount of this, it's extremely dangerous and costly. Very costly. Amen? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we're going to look and see that, that cost that it costs you. Then, then we're going to focus on, I was going to give you the, the, the misuse of it last, but I think I'll give you the misuse of it now. And then we're going to get into the nuts and bolts. Is there a way... We who are born in sin, which separates us from our God, amen, from the instruction, is there a way to get back that instruction? And this is when, when you read Isaiah chapter 42, verse 5 to 7, this is, this is when God said, I have called the Messiah. I have called him for a specific purpose that when water fall on the ground, I have a way of what? Regaining it. For the soul that is separate from me but still has purpose. We talk, I, I preached a message a few weeks ago and I quote the scripture, Ephesians chapter chapter 2, verse 10. God said, I have recreated, I have assigned the Messiah to get that which I create for a specific purpose. To recreate him, reset him according to the purpose. And then I've let him lay hold of those purpose that I create before the foundation of the hurt. And I've given him instruction how to walk, how to carry it out. This is Ephesians 2.10. So God said, I have a sign and I have called forth and hold the, hold the Messiah hand. Amen. And I have given to bring back Israel into covenant with me, into instruction according to their purpose. And the Gentile into the way of doing light, meaning I can see things are made visible. Ephesians chapter 5, we, we studied this a few weeks ago, verse 13 through 18. Amen. Light makes things visible and clear. I'll make the Gentile once again have instruction, have understanding how to deal with me, how to deal with people, how to deal with things, deal with situations. More than ever, listen to me, church and the unchurch. What the world need right now, both in COVID and all this unrest, it's instruction how to deal with the unrest. We need the instruction of the Lord. How do you deal with unsettling time, with unsettling events and circumstances, an unknown virus? We need instruction how to pass through it, how to overcome it, and how to maintain a life according to habitation, peace, and, amen, and life, and abundance, and goodness. Apart from God, we cannot succeed at this. We are certainly doomed and headed amen, speedily, as you'll see, to hurricane destruction. We need God more than ever. We cannot turn our back on God and winging it, amen, unless we are committed to destruction, is not a solution. Guessing and pretending that we know things that we do not understand, amen, and, 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 and we do not have instruction and just activating it, it is extremely dangerous and harmful, amen, to humanity and works directly against the one who creates, amen, life to be maintained and sustained. In Jesus' name. We're going to, before again, as I said, get into the nuts and bolts, huh? what's the proper way to operate. We're going to look at, as, as we have seen so far, what God has set up. A -a 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 amen. The danger of working without the instruction. A -a 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 amen. I know God, has, in his mercy, amen, um, I've sent for Jesus to get us back to instruction. You know, sometimes people go, Bishop, you, you truly love to praise God. I have to praise God. 
I was born away from instruction, but for a purpose, but without a manual to carry out the purpose. And God in his mercy sent for Jesus to atone for me that I can come back to get instruction to live my most effective and excellent life to glorify him. When, when, the, when the thing you make or the person operate according to the mandate, if you, have you ever seen somebody that is good at something, amen, have the skill set, the knowledge, execute something? It is so graceful and beautiful. You ever see a, a great musician that understand music, play music? It's mesmerizing. It is soothing. It's captivating. Because that man is in his in their element. That woman is in their element. On the, on the contrary, you ever see someone do something they're not good at? And you're like, ooh, they are butchering this piece of music. They should stop singing. Or they pray. You, you, you know, there, there's a famous story. There was a guy praying, I think it was with Evan Roberts. And he was doing such a terrible job of praying. You know, the man of God put his hand over his mouth and go, you don't pray, don't pray. Please don't pray. Everything you kind of pray is about destruction and we are into evoking life. So you go, let, let's just, just listen. Just, don't, just listen. It's terrible. When you see a person who do not, let's say they don't know how to play the piano or something, and they start playing, you go, just, just don't touch it. Don't, 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 don't. You're not helping anybody right now or yourself. Amen. Or someone who do not have the gift or the grace to navigate such a certain kind of speech or certain kind of language, and they start trying to explain something, and you go, um, just stop, stop before you hurt yourself. You are hurting yourself in what you are attempting. You do not have the instruction necessary to execute this process. You have totally turned everything up. You have made the person was confused before they come in, and you were supposed to give them clarity. What you have done is make them twice as much what confused by them you done. Mm -hmm. Amen. And what they simply don't have is the instruction. But God, in His grace and mercy, sent for Jesus to atone for our people. Amen. Operating in darkness without instruction to be brought back into the light where they can have instruction. So please be clear. God purpose and assignment for us to execute it, those have never changed. What do you what, what do you what, what I mean, sin has make us try to do it without proper instruction? And what the regeneration Jesus came is to make us still have to do it, but now with what? Instruction, with grace, with know-how, with support. And God saying the process as you're getting familiar, he's so much more merciful. I'm not gonna leave you as an orphan, one who have now just been assigned with new instruction just to do it. I'm going to do it what? This is Periclesis. He said, I'm going to do it what? With you. Even with instruction, God used to be with Adam. We are made to carry out the purpose with instruction, but what? With God. So just in case you're using instruction, you're, you're forgetting this part. This part has to go with that, or this one has to be done first. Amen? In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We just thank you, Lord. We just praise you and glorify you. You are merciful. You are good. A God who creates things and people, but create them with what? Ways to execute. So Jesus, I have the way. I have the way to regenerate, refresh you, and the way of instruction how to execute it. I know to stop the ignorance or the misuse or the abuse of you and things. There are many things going on in all this unrest. You understand? And, and what's happening, the misuse that's going on or the abuse is, is lack of instruction, lack of clarity, lack of know-how, lack of sentiment, lack of love. Whatsoever is necessary, there's a lack, a deficiency that sin amen, erodes and take away amen, to carry out the tasks and the happenings of life. Life is about a series of interplay, but there's a way how all these interplay should work and unfold. May God have mercy. We got a few more minutes before I close up today. You know, there's nothing more frustrating than getting something and you have bad instruction. Mm -hmm. And but your saving grace is if you can call somebody who's an expert and they can interpret those instructions, then you can fix it. Yes. And we have both excellent instructions. It's called the Word of God. And we have the spirit of the architect. Yes. It's like, how can you do music? Right you there. Music, you don't need to be terrible. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Good instruction and the instructor right there. 
What a wow. That's oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Amen. You know, sometimes I hear people say, well, you must understand why he's good. He created a, a earth and the, and the heavens, amen, and create people to habitate it. And, then, and he give them instruction. And even when they find a way to cut off the instruction, he find a way, as you see in Second Samuel, they meant to regenerate them, reset them, so they can have the instruction. And he know you can't do it without the instruction. You're the only one deceiving yourself and those foolish enough to think you can do something. If you have any sense that someone coming and going to do something, the first thing you ask, normally we ask, well, do you have any reference? Have you ever built anything or do anything? No, no, you're going to be the first. Ooh, that scares me. Yeah. You mean I've never done this? You want to use me as your guinea pig? I don't think so. You know, you got to get some experience first. Or maybe let's start you on a less important project. <laughs> so if you mess it up, it's not so bad. The consequence is not so uh, severe. Hallelujah. Let's get you before you build a house or the road. Maybe let's get to you build a little sandbox. <laughs> you know, the consequence is not so severe. You know, Adam showed he couldn't follow instructions. So God's like, I ain't going to leave you alone again. <laughs> I ain't going to leave you alone. I'm going to live right in. Amen. Of you. you can't avoid me even if you want to. Amen. We thank God. He improved the program. He, he improved the program. Amen. Because I'm, I'm, I'm covered it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let everyone know because I'm going to personally teach everyone. Amen. Let's, let me show you what happened with our destruction. This morning we were sharing. We had a fellowship with the church before we start service. Go to Deuteronomy 29. I want to show what happens without instruction. Verse 18 to 21. Isn't chapter 29 talk about the, um, the courses in the book? Yes. The one we fellowship on this morning. Okay. The book of Deuteronomy. 29 from verse 18. And I want to give you context again. Um, Verse 18. So after God had bring his people to Israel, as I said, he sent for this Messiah, Messiah to, to you know he, he established back the covenant with them. He set some laws before them, laws of blessing and laws of, of destruction. He go, he go, if you walk in the way of um blessings, um, you know, all these all these things will be with you. But if you walk in the way against it, we'll, we'll you'll see what happened. Verse 18 said. Beware, meaning be on your guard, pay, pay, pay attention. Beware lest there should be among you a man or a woman or a family or a tribe whose mind and heart turns away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations. Lest there should be among you, amen, a poisonous root, amen, that bears gall. Gall is bitter, as you know, amen, um, and, and, and wormwood. So he said, just in case, you know, whether it's a man or a woman or a child or a family or a tribe who turns away from God, who turns away. When you turn away from God, be very clear. You turn away from instruction. The church are those that as we regenerate, recall to God, we're supposed to be staying with God. And the reason they're staying with God is so they can have what? Instruction to do the things they're supposed to do. And also instruction not to do the things they're not supposed to do. Because one of the reason many of us do certain things and believe certain things and think certain things and speak and act is because you have not been instructed, you're not supposed to not do that or participate in that. Amen. So anytime you turn away from God, you have turned away from the amen, the, the software, you are an operated program, you have life, amen. The software that is necessary how to engage with God, the task, the person, the thing, the situation, or the circumstance. As my as Pastor Grant said, you're about to try to wing it and hope for the best. Which does not work out. You might get one in a hundred that work out, which is, which is with a principle lock up, meaning that I clearly didn't know what I do, but somehow it worked out. 
your life is too short and, the, and we are too fragile and the consequences are too severe for you to be winging it and hope maybe one in every thousand, every hundred, I might get it right. If a doctor goes, I've never been a doctor and I'm going to try to operate and there's a chance I'll save one in every thousand, the other 999 will die. He ain't touching me. Whatsoever. You know me and my wife always laugh. Every so often these these ad on TV. This thing cure this. However, there are 18 things it can give you. Cancer, this, this. Yes. Far more than what it do. You got to be out of your mind to take that. It's not like it get two things. It's like 20 things it can give you, but a chance can cure one. I, that, that adds, to me, those odds are very simple. I'm taking my chance with my one than the 20. <laughs> you know, now. So, it, you know, it's, it's a be, be careful. You know, so when you turn away from God, you've turned away from instruction, and now you're in danger. You are in danger with God, first of all, and you're in danger working against this planet and the people and the circumstance and the purpose, hurting yourself and hurting those around you. He went on to say, unless when he hears the word, amen, of, of this curse and hope, he flatters and congratulates himself in his mind and heart, saying, I shall have peace and safety, though I walk in the stubbornness of my mind and heart, bringing down a hurricane of destruction, amen, and sweep away the water, amen, the watered land with the dry. When you walk outside of the thing, this is why, you know, many, many companies, when you buy something, they go, if you don't follow these instructions, you avoid your contract. We're taking it back. They go, if something goes wrong according to the instruction, hands down. No argument, you'll deal with it. But if you go against these instructions and sweep away, bring down an hurricane of explosion, and you think you can bring it back, no, that's on you. You're just a little rebel who refused to operate the things according to the design and the nature and the intended purpose. But someone expected to have a good amen, outcome. This is madness. It is madness. You have to execute according to the instruction. Then if something goes wrong, you can hold the manufacturer what? accountable. Can you operate according to the principles? Amen? But lying to yourself after you decide to Go against it, to rebel against it, and go, oh, everything will work out. You know, I will enjoy the peace, amen, and, 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 and all the goodness and safety that come from using this thing or this interplay. God said, you are lying to yourself. You see, what you have activated is an hurricane, a slew of destruction into your life, into that situation, into that circumstance. And a lot of times, because we, we don't live all by ourselves, all isolated, we have wives and husbands and children and families and community, you are bringing it upon the whole one. Community. So the Bible said that's a poison that's root, can be in a tribe, can be in a family. Amen? And so forth. You're pulling the wrong cords, cords of destruction. This is why I said more than ever in all this unrest and pandemic, we need the instruction of God. Amen. How to calm this process, how to navigate these waters, how to become effective, how to overcome, how to get healed, how to get reset, how to operate according to life and togetherness and equality and fairness and trueness. Amen. And how to, more important, be in God and walk with God and live with God or be in instruction and walk with instruction and live in instruction. And apply instruction, doing things correctly. The Bible call it righteous. All oh, righteousness is all things are operated according to how it was designed. This is righteousness. God is God. You operate with God as you are our humanity and to play with God and with each other and with things that He created and with the planet and so forth. This whole process is righteousness. Unrighteousness is what? You're violating some or all of this because of lack of instruction most of the time. Mosiah 4 6. Lack of knowledge. Because this is why you're dying, you're killing yourself. You're, you're releasing hurricanes of destruction on you and your family, the generation after you. Sometimes a child born to a family, and they have to clean up such a mess for the parents before. They cannot get ahead because there's such destruction in the family name or the life or the lineage that you, you, you can never get out from under this. Sometimes they have to run away or change their name. They don't want to associate with that family or they change their name or they run away from there. They go, I just couldn't make it from that ground. The ground is just too destroyed. Too much devastation in that family. 
I could never build a life. I'm starting from too far behind and life is too short. So they'll change their name. Amen. They'll go to a different place. He went on to say in verse 20, the Lord will not pardon him. Amen. But then the anger of the Lord and his jealous jealousy, amen, will, will smoke against that man. And all the curses that are written in the book shall settle on him. The Lord will blot, blot out his very name from under the heavens. He's one who evokes destruction. This is Isaiah 45, verse 18, against that which God set up. And this is this is a second Samuel chapter chapter 14 again. God, um, uh, uh, verse 40. God made everything amen to live. And this person has activated a law of force of destruction and origin to destroy that which God has established for life and sustenance and expansion and multiplicity. He's activate something to come against it to destroy it. So now he find himself like Paul. He's fighting what the architect. On top, you have the destruction that we can have it in his life. The hurricane is fighting the architect. God, you have released something into my atmosphere, into my land, you know, my hurt, and under my heaven that I have set up, amen, to live to kill it all. He got, and when you attack me, that fierce, uh, he said, I won't spare you. This is what we, we, had, we had read earlier to. Um, in, 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 20, in, in um, Isaiah 28, he said, my wrathful vengeance will come against you because you are decide to position yourself up against me. He said, why that can forgive your ignorance? I can't, amen. I'm very unhappy in what you have released in the land. I still have to deal with that. So, so that's why, that's why it's, as, as I said, amen. The Lord will not pardon him. My anger is against you because you have released all this curse. Amen. And we'll blot it. Verse 21 said, and the Lord will single him out for ruin. So you have activated destruction upon you and your household. And destruction from all the tribes of Israel. Amen. According to all the curses of the covenant that are written in the books of law. When you operate contrary to the design, you have activate destruction upon you and sometimes your household and your community. And you have activate destruction, more important, against your relationship with the instruction source. Can you see this? The reason of a, you know, one of the things is testifying all this unrest is showing us. We are operating contrary to the design of the author Amen. Of the earth and us. And, and away from that, we can do nothing but release what? Destruction. Jesus put it this way in John chapter 15, verse 7 and 8. Apart from me, apart from instruction, you, go, you can do nothing. The only thing you can do is release destruction in your spirit and in your soul and in your beliefs and in your thoughts and your body and your words and your manifestation and your community and your job and the land and the hurt. Because it's the only thing you can do. Because you don't have the, you didn't create it and you don't have the instruction how to navigate it. So you go apart from me. But if you abide with me, if you stay in me and I abide in you, you will do much great things to your creator. What? Glory. He said you will produce much fruit that your creator will be glorified. You'll go, look at the one I've created to do this purpose. Look how he execute the instruction that I've given you. And look at the effects of this instruction. Not hurricane destruction. Amen. Hurricane abundance. Anytime I have an area of my life or anything in working, one thing I quickly know, I'm someone moving outside of the instruction. So I quickly go to God and say, Father, I'm not sure what I have missed, but help me to take corrective measure according to your will and according to this task you have called me for, that I will do it righteously for your glory. Or, or even simple as my wife said, just ask for like, that, everything I've just said, that's all that is. I'm, that's just, I'm asking for instruction on the dream. You don't have to get fancy in your prayer. You don't have to use many words I got. Lord, I can see from the effect there's an absence of light. Can you give me light? This is bad. <laughs> Lord, can you fix this? Lord, can, can, just like Job sent the woman from Tikeo to tell David, you know, hey, what is the principle of God? Your life? Then what are you doing? Show me what I'm doing that's bringing this apart. Yes. Like, like what Job was asking. Show me why the effect of destruction is happening in my spirit or in my soul or in my body or in my beliefs or in my thoughts or in my words or manifestation. It's clearly moving against your instruction. Because you made, you see, God made each one of you to shine. The Bible says, you will shine like the sons of righteousness will shine like the sun in the kingdom. 
Because you are supposed when you apply your purpose, man is supposed to marvel and praise your what creator. The way you go about your business, the Bible says, see how a man go about his work, he will be before kings. When you have instruction that you do things, kings go, send for that man. They're great at what they do. The Bible says, look how a man is diligent in his work, for he or she shall be before what? Kings. But see how somebody is destruction and everybody is trying to what? avoid them. They go, Can you keep that person thing away from me? Because when they pass through, bad things what? happen. They activate the hurricane of what? destruction we are going to stop there today and next week we're going to get into the nuts and bowl where we're going to focus on the instructions of god to live an effective life christian are those that have been reset and i suppose this is the whole idea of communion god said i want to walk in an unbroken relationship with you where i'm constantly communicating and pointing you to the task that you are designed this and the instruction i will give you to do this process is called amen unbroken fellowship with god or communion i'm constantly in communication with god to deal with the various happening in my life as he assigned them and the things that i'm not supposed to touch meaning i don't have knowledge about i don't touch matters and subjects as the Bible said, it's too wonderful for me. Mm -hmm. David God, there are some things mm -hmm. that, that I, I do not I mean, have the desire or the know-how. They're too wonderful. I don't touch them. I leave it alone. Because I have no ability how to navigate those water. Okay, that's Does this make sense? <laughs> <laughs> some, some Crazy stuff. You know, yeah. There's too wonderful for me. Meaning they're beyond my reach of expertise. Let those that have been designed for them who have instruction how to deal with, let them deal with those things. There are, if there's a thing in this earth, there's a man assigned to what? Deal with it. God, the Bible said God didn't let anything grow without amen, man to deal with it. Anything that's happening, there is someone, Jesus was designed specifically to bring back Israel and what? Mankind to God. Everything that's happening, there's an assigned agent for it. God has assigned someone with the ability out to navigate them. Let them do their thing. Pray for them. When you see something happening and you realize very quickly, I don't have instruction, what should you pray? Lord, send forth one, amen, who have instruction how to deal with this matter. You know, one of the, one of the prayer the church should be praying all the time. I call this prayer, amen, and, I, and it's not my prayer. I heard it. I read it once from Brother Nee. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Meaning all the unrest we have, we need someone, amen, who can deal with all of it. We need Jesus. More than ever, you should be saying, come, Lord Jesus, come. Come deal with all this unrest. Come deal with all the darkness, meaning lack of instruction. Come deal with all of these subjects, amen, and these trespassing that are happening with inappropriate, insufficient knowledge. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Meaning, come one with instruction. Come created one, come. Amen. Come, architect, come. Church, as we get ready, we're going to rest here today. I want to encourage the church. Take no undertaking. Amen. The Bible teaches us in test, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4. Amen. The Bible teaches you, you should not be overtaken or be surprised like a thief because you are not children of darkness, children of the night. You are, you are children of the light, meaning you operate from knowing, from instruction. So things should not be surprising. Make sure you, we, the church, stay in communion with God over everything and anything, constantly being instructed how to deal with God, how to deal with our beliefs, our thoughts, our words, our manifestation, our family, our resource, our community, our, our churches, our interplay, are we going in a constant instruction? He is the word. He loves to talk. He loves to give instruction. You must love to listen. When we get into the nuts and bolts, David said, amen, uh, David said, God look for those that are loving and obedient. Amen. And, and who receive in love and obedient. So, Make sure, because we don't want, we have lived enough life without instruction. We have created enough hell on this earth. We have helped to create quite a bit of destruction when we were living apart from instruction or apart from life. For the church, that has to stop. You have to ask God for the grace that you stop engaging 
in subjects or matter without instruction. It is absolute, inappropriate, and dangerous. And it will activate the effects of the hurricane destruction and the discipline of God that you're evoking the wrong thing. So you get double beating. The effects of the destruction and you get the discipline of God for in, inappropriate evoking or activation. And yes, and, and correction. Amen. Notice what we read in Isaiah 28. The Bible says, Is God instructs him correctly? He instructs everything, amen. Whether it's the dill or the spelt or the fennel, how, to, how it should go. You know, I love watching my wife gardening. You know, sometimes the, the plants are too heavy or the flowers, and she'll put sticks, she'll, she'll guide it how it should go and when, or up the fence where it should run. So she guides it. As our God give her instruction out to guide things, she guides it in Jesus' name. So would the church have to operate all the time. This is why the Lord hate the proud or pride. It is those who try to do things without instruction, by assumption. And as I said, it makes a fool of them, the people around them, and out of the one who created them. They make it like, like if God puts someone there without instruction. No, if not, he puts someone without instruction, they refuse the instruction. They will not return to God so you can give them proper instruction how to deal with things effectively. They believe they know, though they didn't create nothing or the moment or the situation. And for the unchurched, there is enough destruction in your life and in your family, in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, your belief, thoughts, words, and especially the world. We have to stop this destruction. The only way we can do this, whether the unchurched or the church, we must return to the rock from where we came from, to the source, to the instruction source, to know how to deal with life. We are always running a software. We are always believing. We are always thinking. We are always speaking, always acting, always engaging. This is dangerous without appropriate instruction. We're living a life, existing in a life that you do not have instruction how to execute it. It's extremely harmful to you. It's harmful to your potential, to your creator, those around you. God made you for greatness. And it's time you live great, whether you're in the church or out of the church. But to do it, you must return to the source and have constant, constant, unbroken, amen, supply of instruction how to deal with your life, family, situation, circumstance, and condition, and especially your God. And don't lie to yourself if you're not doing this, flattering and congratulating yourself that you will have safety and peace apart from instruction. No, what you have to look forward is hurricane destruction, meaning swift, aggressive, Abrupt destruction out of nowhere. We need to stop the ignorance. It is time for Uzziah 4 6 to retire in this. We need to stop dying for lack of knowledge. It's available. Jesus was sent forth both for Israel and the Gentile to have what's needed to be affected. You need instruction to know to raise your children, instruction to take care of your spirit, your soul, your body, your family, your reason, all of it. Your house, everything, even to be a gardener, whatsoever. Let's call on the Lord. It is time for this world to repent. Too long have we lived apart or away from instruction. Too long we try to live on our own limitation. We will see what Mark human, limited, lack of sufficient knowledge. It is time to come back to God. It is time for the church to show what it is to walk with instruction. I so thank God for Jesus and the church and for that which is made in his image, the unchurched too. You will return to the Lord and have instruction in Jesus' name. Wheresoever you are right now, this is to the unchurched. I want you to come back to instruction. If right now we, the Messianic Church of God and the body of Christ, we want to join our faith with your faith. Wheresoever you are right now, if you believe in your heart and confess this with your mouth, that Jesus is the Son of God, the authorized one, is the Lord, the owner, and the Christ, the one sent forth to save mankind. And God raised him from the dead. One with no instruction came back into full instruction of the right hand of God. He's at the right hand of God where he's seen how to deal with everything. And the Bible said once he received the promise of the Holy Spirit, the full instruction for everything, he wants to pour it out on everybody. He wants to pour it out. So right now, Confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, and I'll do it with you. Jesus is the Son of God. God raised him from the dead. He's the Lord and the Christ. You shall be saved and have the unbroken 
instruction and your family and your household and you can pass it on to all generations that we will stop operating in ignorance of lack of knowledge and God will bless you and your family in abundance and everything you will execute to its highest potential and fruitfulness glorifying God we will get to see what God has put in you amen and, uh, and all that he had in store for you the world will benefit we just thank God for your life and your families we commit all of us afresh into your hand father in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit in Jesus' name, we love you and thank God for your life. Amen. Amen.